welcome to a new episode of What Do You Think? And we've just started the new book, the book of Shemot, which is the story of the Jewish people being slaves and ultimately being freed. We have to wait a few parshiot until we get there. The Jewish people, they've been slaved now for over 200 years, waiting. When are they going to be freed? We were told by our great, great, great grandfather, Avraham, he was told that apparently that we're going to be strangers in a land that doesn't belong to us. I guess it must be Egypt. And we're one day going to be freed. But when is that going to happen? When are we going to go? And the Jewish people are like, like, this is going on forever. And we know there was one baby. It was a baby boy. And it was born. And they wanted to hide the baby boy because any boys that were born at that time were thrown into the Nile. And they tried to hide the baby. And they couldn't. They put the baby in the Nile. And then, who finds the baby? Pharaoh's daughter. Her name was Batya. Batya means the daughter of God. Because Pharaoh, not only did he say he was a king, he told everybody, I'm a god. Can you imagine that? <laughs> I'm a god. Oh my. King, god. So he told everybody that he's a god. And he's called his daughter, Batya. You're the daughter of God. Now, can you imagine Imagine a scene, okay? Your father, and it's not, but imagine, okay, your father hates Jews. He hates Jews so much, he wants to kill every single Jew. And now you see a baby boy in a basket, and you think, am I going to save that baby boy? One minute, he's Jewish. If he's Jewish, that means my father's going to kill him. What's the point? What's the point? I live with my father. What? I'm going to bring this. What's that you've got there? Uh, a Jewish boy. What? Kill it! Do you, why would you even bother? But what did Batya do? Batya decided, you know what? Even though I don't see how it's possible for a Jewish boy to live, I'm going to do my bit. You know, the Medrash says that her arm stretched and it stretched and it stretched and it stretched until she got to the basket. Often with Midrashim, they're stories which teach us a message. You've got to take them seriously, but not always literally. To say that her arm stretched, it probably, probably wasn't that her arm actually literally stretched. I mean, if she would see her arm stretch, ah, what's going on? My arm stretched. You get quite scared about that. But rather, she went beyond herself. She went further. And she just said, I'm going to try to save this Jewish boy, even though it seems absolutely, utterly impossible. I'm still not going to quit. I'm going to try my best, even though it seems impossible to save this boy. Because I'm living with my daddy and my daddy hates Jews. And I'm going to raise up this boy in the palace. It's never going to happen. Let the baby die. I can't do anything about it. No, she went beyond herself. She went further and said, I will do what I can, even if it's going to be impossible. And she saved the baby. And who is the baby? Moshe. She called the baby Moshe. Because of her actions, that's why Moshe was around in the end to save the Jewish people. Moshe grew up. He then ran away from Egypt after killing the Egyptian. And Hashem spoke to him in a burning bush and said to him, I want you to be the leader of the Jewish people. Now, there's one medrash that when Moshe was a small baby, Pharaoh was thinking, one minute, this is a Jewish boy here. Maybe he's going to want to actually take my crown maybe he's going to actually want to be the leader of the jewish people especially because once when he was a little kooky baby he went for pharaoh's crown and he took the crown and he put the crown on his own head and all the advisors said oh, he's oh he wants your crown and pharaoh says he's a baby for goodness sake they said no 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 he's gonna want your crown all right let's do a test and he did a test and they put the crown down and they put some burning coal and they wanted to know if Moshe would go for the crown, they'd say, oh, we're going to kill the baby because maybe he wants to become the king. If he goes for the coal, then we'll let him live. Moshe was about to go for the crowns and the Medrash says that he pushed a hand and the angel went for the coal, put it inside his mouth and he burnt his mouth. From then on, Moshe couldn't speak properly. Now, when Moshe was at the burning bush and Hashem said to Moshe, Moshe, I want you to be the leader. What did Moshe say? Me be the leader? I can't speak properly. I've always had this problem because my mouth got burnt. I can't speak. Me? <laughs> You've got to be kidding. Me to be the leader of the Jewish people? I can't speak properly. How on earth do you expect me to lead when I, when I can't speak very nicely? I, I've got this way of speaking where it doesn't come out well. 
What Hashem say? Hashem says, that doesn't matter. I'm the one who gave that speech. I'm the one who caused that. I can do anything I want. And whenever you're going to lead the Jewish people, I will make a miracle and you'll be able to speak absolutely clearly. You see the same idea as well. Is that Moshe, so in the end Moshe said, I'll do it. After being persuaded, he said, I'll do it. But you might say, one minute, I can't do this. It's impossible. This is never going to happen. I just don't have the tools. I don't have the skills. I'm just not able to. Nah! Why bother trying? Just forget about it. Now nah, you're never going to do it. Now nah, you're the bitch. Nah, I'm no good. I can't do it. I'm too tired. I'm too hungry. i got too many other... I just got to forget it. But what we see from over here is with Batya, no. You do your best even though you think you can't do it when it comes to Moshe. Even though we thought I can't do it, you do your best. Hashem does the rest. My question over here, something to think about. What do you think? Do you have anything in your life that you think, I just can't. I can't. I'm just not able to. But maybe you can. Maybe you truly can. If you just do your bit. This is impossible. But just do your bit. What do you think? Something to talk about at the Shabbat table. What do you think? Is there something that you think, I can't do it, but maybe, even so, just do your part. And if you do your bit, then maybe Hashem will do his bit too. Shabbat Shalom.